my name is Rhonda King, and I'm a student at Edgecombe Community College. Hello, my name is Rhonda King, and I am a student at Edgecombe Community College. I want to share with you today a little bit about where I was when Hurricane Matthew began. Um, I was at home, and it was raining endlessly. Things were pretty good. My neighborhood is consists of about 75 homes. Um, let me go back a little bit, bit though. When Hurricane Matthew, when Hurricane Floyd came through in 1999, we thought things would be good. Um, out of the 75 homes, about 60 of them were affected. So we kind of had that in the back of our minds, but we weren't expecting things to turn in like they did and, and regarding the storm. We thought we would be okay, actually, because we were like, we didn't think this much water would come. Um, so our town had been monitoring things and initially they said that we may get some water, but that it wasn't gonna be um, as significant as it was in 99. So we kind of played things by ear. Um, it was normal. We were doing what most average families do, just, you know, trying to wait things out. Um, we had gotten um, notifications that we, part of us would probably have to leave our homes. We wanted to stick things out. Um, so most of us stayed. Um, during the course of the night, the fire department was, you know, coming back and forth. Um, and the evacuation began initially with the homes that were um, at the back of the community where the river like comes near our back doors, but it hadn't gotten to the point that um, it was coming into the houses as of yet. It was just high sitting on the banks and rising at about um, maybe an inch or two every 30 to 40 minutes. Um, so we thought we could make it. Those families that were affected um, that lived like directly in that area, they made it until about two in the morning. The water came in and part of those homes, the water came in um, about maybe halfway the walls, which is better than it was with Floyd because at Floyd, it just, all of the water came in and it was just like, you know, very high. Um, so that was about two o'clock that morning. Um, and part of those families are um, evacuating. The cars and stuff were like being moved to higher ground, which was like over actually where my part of the neighborhood. And um, things were going good. We, those families were evacuating. They had places to go. Um, some of, most of them were um, kind of elderly persons who stayed in the neighborhood for years and years. Um, and the boats were going back and forth because they had to use, they came in with the, um, the big fire engines. They had like rescue boats. They weren't electric, they were um, paddle, little like rafts, paddle boat rafts. And so they were being evacuated, they came, um, their cars were, most of their cars were up on higher ground, so they were able to um, go to the shelter area that had been established for us. Um, later on that morning, the fire department came to about um, maybe 15 more houses and told them that they would have to go because there's also um, a pond in our area and the pond had started to spill over. So those persons were being evacuate, evacuated. 
we thought we were good because, you know, we're, I live like on a hill. So I was good. How I got affected was we had construction going on in my house and the original plan, bless my mom's heart, but she wanted to add, um, some skylights instead of just a original room and it would have been okay if the skylights were just the small skylights but she wanted to be extravagant and she so I don't know like the dimensions of the skylights but that all of that was open and it affected like two rooms so the contractor had put like this um, heavy plastic tarp like stuff up and it wasn't strong enough the winds were um high and it started like like a run in it at first and so we were like okay well it's a run so it shouldn't affect it too much but i i guess like the wind or whatever like made it rip off and that's how I was affected. It the water, like just it rained literally in two of our rooms, and that room was the room that my daughter has and my bedroom. So all of our um, like our beds, our computers, our part of our clothes, that type of thing was destroyed and. Um, all we could do at that point was just like leave because we didn't, um, we tried to, we packed like things to try to like keep water from coming into the rest of the house, like through the doors and stuff. And that pretty much worked. Um, the next day we like went to assess to see what was what and um, my dad said well I don't think we're gonna be able to recover it in terms of like just we thought it would be minimal but it ended up like um, that because that back wall was opened those two rooms like had to be completely redone with the new room so it was a blessing in disguise though um, it allowed us some upgrades but by the same token, I felt um, the process was, because the home was not in my name, my parents had to get involved and they had to do all of the paperwork. And it appeared at first that we wouldn't be able to recover because they were saying that if had we not been doing construction, then we wouldn't have been affected. But the homeowner's insurance picked up and that's how we were able to get through our scenario. We didn't stay at a shelter. We actually went to my aunt's home who lives about um, maybe 15, 20 minutes from us. And um, we stayed there for a while until everything got back together. Princeville is um, a historical town in Eastern North Carolina. It was affected the most um, on this end still riding through today there are persons who several people who haven't fully recovered um, the debris still lays in front of the houses people are still stripping the houses down um, and it's a slow process they're waiting for um, either to be bought out or to just up and leave um, part of them have recovered um, the homes that weren't damaged as badly like um, it depended on where you were in Princeville as to how much damage you received and those persons that got affected but who weren't as affected as hard, they've been able to um, recover. But there's still persons who are just like um, 
in hotels and waiting to receive, you know, the remainders of monies or either waiting for a buyout. I, I initially came back to school to speak to the Dean of Students to let her know that I would not be returning to school. Um, I'm an HIT major, which means my courses are online. So the laptop that the school had allowed me to use had um, gotten destroyed. My textbooks were destroyed. Um, and I was trying to get things back together for um, my daughter and myself, and I did not want to come back to school. Um, I, I thought about um, dropping out because I thought it was the best option. Um, our president um, announced that the school would be establishing um, funding for us to, for assistance. Um, and I was able to get um, part of that assistance. My books were provided. Um, and that ultimately is what saved me because I didn't have any money to get my books. In my major, my, my books are like kind of expensive. And so I knew I wouldn't be able to replace them. It was, um, although I'm only carrying seven hours because I'm waiting for actual acceptance into my program, um, I had four books. One book was a $300 book, um, Anatomy and Physiology. I knew I was not going to be able to replace that at all. Um, and the book for the other course, um, Miss Keel um, was effective in helping me obtain those books. Those books um, amounted to about the same in price as that anatomy book. So it was about like six or seven hundred dollars for books that the school helped me recover on. Haven't recovered from that, but I have, I'm currently using a small tablet that I have a keyboard for to finish up. I just felt like everything that I had worked hard for, even though it's, you get attached to your things. And I felt like, you know, even though it was just furniture and clothing, you know, the things were replaceable, but I felt like you know, I work hard and, you know, and all and just, you know, a, a matter of hours. The little part that I owned was, you know, was gone. And I had no ideas, you know, how I would replace it. And we were having to run back and forth as far as um, trying to get things straightened out. And my parents are older, so getting them back and forth to where we had to go and we had gone through um we contacted fema initially um and they instructed us to contact our house insurance but we didn't know the process because like i said in 1999 we weren't affected so um it, i i didn't have that security there anymore and so i i kind of felt like even though I was welcomed in my aunt's home, it wasn't home. And you still like have at the back of your mind, um, you know, you're still thinking about how you're going to replace things and, you know, what life is going to be like next. And it takes a toll on you because um, I had to like take my daughter to school every day. Um, and that was like like 20 miles 20 extra miles every day one way that i had to like you know go and then i come to school then i have to go back and get her and then i have to you know come back to my aunt's house so that kind of like um monies were limited at the time so you, you're trying to figure out how are you going to get things done? And you feel you go through a depression state and 
you wonder, even though you have faith, you wonder, you know, how are we going to get our lives back on track? And with a child, it's, it's important to have stability and to um, nurture the child to, even though things are unstable, to try to present um, stabilization to a child is kind of hard when um, the child is at an age that, you know, she kind of knows that this isn't home, but you try to tell her it's home for, you know, a few months. And um, she she kind of got discouraged um, and she was ready to go back to our house. Um, but she weathered it. She, she did pretty good. It didn't affect her um, grades. And I thought it was going to affect her behavior, but she did okay. She, I found that out this morning. <laughs> so, yeah. We are back at home. Thank God. Um, and it, it feels good. It, to wake up out of, you know, and get out of your own bed and do your own routine. Um, there are rules everywhere you go when sometimes you just, you know, you feel like, you know, you're a visitor in a person's home. So you want to get up and get to going like that person and try to stay going until that person goes back. So that was our routine for about a month and a half. 